Two thumbs up from Steve. One, two. everybody I'm Steve Mathis and I'm hoping to do some photography today and uh, I'm not full of hope but I'm going out anyways I've returned from Africa uh, I have not been out here in the Tetons for a while like two months yeah, that's about right, because I do my uh, Yellowstone winter workshop, and then I'm briefly home, and then I go to Africa for like three and a half weeks. So I'm back. I've recovered from jet lag, which was pretty, um, how do I say it, impactful. <laughs> it was significant this year. I felt it, but uh, anyway, I'm back. We just had a big snowstorm, which is kind of one of the reasons I'm not full of hope this morning about finding much to photograph. So uh, here in the valley in town, we got two plus feet of snow in the last 48 hours. And uh, often the wildlife kind of hunkers down for a while after a big storm like that. And... Um, we often don't see much for a while. So anyway, I'm out uh, currently on the National Elk Refuge. Just going to do a drive through here at sunrise. Ooh, the sky's starting to get a little pink. It's beautiful out. But I thought I'd come check the cliffs for some bighorn sheep. And uh, if I were to get really lucky, maybe some wolves out here. But I'm just going to do kind of a drive through the valley here this morning, see what I can find, hopefully make a couple of photos, knock the rust off, and uh, see if I can make a video as well for you out here. So hang in there, and I'll let you know what we find. And it's good to be back. No critters yet, but I'm gonna stop and take two quick photos. One of the moon up there in that little nook with the snow-covered trees. And another out that way, the Grand Teton. is super foggy, but it's in like this pink soupy fog. I don't think that one's gonna turn out very well, but I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna get out the uh, 180 to 600 millimeter lens for both of these and I'll be right back. All right, back in the car. So neither one of those was particularly compelling. The The one with the moon and the snow covered trees was okay, actually. Uh, you got the moon in there and then a few different layers kind of coming down the left hand side of the frame there uh, with the slope of the mountains. So that was pretty cool. Um, the Grand is just a little too too fogged in to be able to do much with that. And I got out of the car for that one because it's zero degrees out and it's probably like 60 inside the car. And uh, heat diffraction can kill those kind of shots if I'm trying to shoot from the car when there's that big of a temperature differential. So on cold mornings like this, I get out of the car to shoot because otherwise everything I shoot is gonna be mushy and soft. 
So, uh, Steve Perry, everybody knows Steve Perry. He's got an excellent video about uh, heat diffraction. And um, the, the answer basically with the heat diffraction is you gotta get out of your car and you gotta get away from the vehicle. And those are hard lessons learned out here that we've all <laughs> been through before, before we figured out that you just can't shoot from the car on these cold days. Anyway, back to the search for critters. It's just fantastically beautiful out. It'd be great to find something. It doesn't, uh, doesn't seem likely yet, but I'm still gonna try. driving for a while looking for critters unsuccessfully so far but I actually I see uh, some elk coming out onto the ice well, let's see I'm way up at Slide Lake now yeah. this parking lot's kind of not what I was hoping for because uh, I saw some elk coming out onto the ice of Slide Lake out there that could make for a nice minimalist, just pure white because they're out just on the ice. Uh, and I just saw one elk on the ice and another about to go out. So maybe there's more and they'll go out into a nice pattern on the ice or something. Um, but I got to find a place where I can actually access and be able to see where they are because the snow banks are pretty tall. Uh, oh, yep, there's three bull elk out on the snow right there. It's gonna be, eh, it's probably too small. You won't be able to see them here. I'm not sure I'm gonna get a, be able to get a good angle on these guys, but I'm gonna try. So I'm gonna put this down and see if I can get something out of this. yelling at me. Um, I had to relocate real quick. The angle was a little tricky. I'm not sure it's going to be any better up here, but I'm having a hard time getting all three of them in the frame with a nice clean white background. This looks to be a little bit better here. I don't know if you can see what's going on out there, but uh, I got to hop out of the car. Once I get past this little tree, looks to be a little bit better here. All right, I'm moving again. This time I'm going backwards. The elk kind of came together. It's actually really beautiful. But the background that I want, uh, I'm shooting it really nicely with um, just wide open snow field. Sorry, I'm driving in reverse here, so I'm looking at the side mirror. Um, I'm trying to shoot it really clean, just simple, pure white background, but then I also see some opportunities to include some beautiful trees in the background that gives it a little bit more of a sense of scale. Uh, whoa! <laughs> Almost went into the snowbank, but the shot's lining up nicely. If, 
if the elk cooperate and if I don't run into a snowbank here. Okay, just got to get these trees out of the way. Now, all right, so there they are. But now I think I can get some of the trees behind them. But it's quite lovely scene, just pure white with three beautiful bulls. And then I think the trees are gonna give it some scale, but uh, I'm gonna shoot it both ways because it's wonderful. All right, go back out. Okay. Got super lucky this morning. This is just a gorgeous scene, these three bulls out on the snow. But I gotta move again. They've actually turned and are coming kind of straight at me. I mean, they're still a long ways away, probably. Boy, I don't know how far that is. 700 yards, long ways. But it's just fantastic. Uh, beautiful scene, just three big, beautiful bulls out in the snow. And it's freaking cold. It's zero degrees and the wind's probably blowing. I don't know, 10 or 15 miles an hour. So it's really frigid out. But uh, I'm gonna go make some more photos out here. I don't know if you can even see it, you know? But, you know, they're right out there, I think. But just gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. All right, I'm going back out for more. My eyes are watering because it's cold. It's cold. That wind is just brutal. I'm even dressed appropriately and I'm freezing. Wow. All right. Uh, I'm not quite sure where to be next. They're kind of, they're kind of just doing a weird loop across the lake. Oh, and at the other end, as I was out here working these three bulls, uh, three moose came out down at the other end of the lake. They're even further away. Uh, but that's pretty cool to see as well. Anyway, I think I'm gonna hang here for a minute. These bulls just keep coming a little bit closer. The light's super flat. I would like probably prefer a little bit of directional light so I could get a shadow of uh, the elk on the snow as well. But I don't think that's gonna happen. Because there's the clouds. Anyway, there's those elk coming closer. So I'm gonna hang here, but uh, I was using the uh, the 180 to 600 here so I could zoom in and out when I had the opportunity to get those trees in the frame with the elk to give it a little bit of uh, kind of sense of scale there. But then I switched to the big one here, the, the 4028, and uh, shot that just because it's a little bit sharper, just a little bit better image quality. Uh, and I just love it. But uh, okay. The elk are still coming in a nice spot. I'm gonna hop back out and shoot some more. Even though it's really cold. again because the elk are moving out but uh, I think I'm about to get some directional light maybe a little bit of shadow I hope we shall see yeah the lights a little bit better I'm gonna hop out and shoot this real quick while I've got a shadow on them
I'll show you real quick what I was doing out here. The sun came out, it was fantastic. Just gorgeous. Um, it's really cold, <laughs> the wind is brutal. But there's the elk, so they're disappearing behind those trees now. But they came all the way from over there and they just did a big loop around. And uh, now it's not so good because they're behind those trees, but really uh, lucky, lucky encounter this morning in this cold post-storm doldrum. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and just see if they uh, continue along the, the same path they're on maybe. I can still get something else out of it without these trees in the foreground, which I don't love, but uh, I'm not gonna give up yet. So I'm gonna stick with them. I doubt there's much else I'm gonna have uh, opportunities for out here today. So this is as good as opportunities I could really hope for. So I'm gonna just stick with it. Wow, my hands are cold. Sheesh. Still going. This time I'm driving forward though, instead of going backwards. Because I turned around. I don't know why I'm checking for traffic, because there's nobody out here. I'm the only idiot here. Uh, these elk are just cruising along. Yeah, I'm kind of losing them behind those trees though. But they're there. So maybe I'll get another shot at them here if they keep coming across. So I'm gonna pull up here, stop and wait for them. See if I can get lucky some more. Okay, well I have a second here. The elk have retreated into those trees. They might come up towards the road here. I'll keep an eye on them. But I uh, just want to let you know what I was uh, shooting there. As I mentioned, I was using uh, two different lenses, the 180 to 600, so I have some flexibility to zoom, and then the 400 to 8 uh, with the built-in teleconverter, so either 400 millimeters or 560. Um, I was mostly shooting at f8 to f11 there because I wanted some depth of field for the three elk, even though they were mostly in the same plane. Uh, that f8 to f11 gives me a little bit more depth of field to hopefully get all of them reasonably sharp. Uh, I pulled the hood off of the lens there that was, uh, again, I mentioned that with uh, Steve Perry kind of made that um, video a couple years ago about how lens hoods, the, the warm air trapped in your lens hood, can actually contribute to the um, heat diffraction as well. So I popped that off when I was getting in and out of the car quite a bit to move locations. Um, and other than that, just waiting for trying to time good leg positions with the elk as they were moving. Of course, I was shooting video and stills and looking for kind of a pleasing arrangement of the three elk. Uh, early on, I had some opportunities to have some background other than just pure white snow. And actually, I really liked it when the sun came out, you could see the texture, the windblown texture of the snow covered lake. And I really liked that. And I'm not sure how well it's going to translate in the photos, but that lead bull, the way the, the light was behind him was casting a shadow of his antlers out in front of him, which I thought was super cool. Uh, I'm not sure how well it's going to translate in the photos, but I was really keen on that. So I was putting him far left in the frame and giving a ton of room out front for that uh, shadow to appear in the frame as well. So that's what was going on in my mind out there. And just a wonderful scene, a bunch of different opportunities, uh, unexpected delight this morning. So um, anyway, I'm gonna watch these guys just for a few more minutes and uh, just in case they decide to come up towards the road and give me another opportunity here. But otherwise, an amazing scene. And um, when this is over, I'll continue cruising around and I'll get back to you uh, with some more updates as the day progresses. But so far, two thumbs up from Steve. One, two.
I'm done. Uh, after leaving those elk, I cruised around for a while looking for more critters and was unsuccessful in locating any more. So, uh, honestly, I'm very happy with uh, the photography I had this morning. So, that was great. Um, did I use the word delightful earlier? I'm pretty sure I did, and it was appropriate because I was delighted out there with those elk. Uh, so I'll wrap it up today. Um, I wanna thank you for watching as always, and I'll mention um, workshops. So spring workshop season's coming up soon. And I do still have some openings for grizzly bears and uh, like baby moose, baby elk, all the birds arriving, uh, lots of stuff going on in the spring. Spring landscapes with the snowy mountains, all that stuff is really good. So uh, hop on my website, and you can check the calendar and uh, schedule yourself, see the availability and schedule, you'll schedule yourself right there on the website. Um, fall is also starting to fill up. Uh, my bull moose workshops for late fall uh, are like half full. That was my windshield wipers making a lot of noise. Uh, bull moose workshops are about half full. Um, Yellowstone next January. Uh, still has some availability, so a yeah, great time to um, get on the schedule uh, while there's still some availability. And I know there's a lot of uh, planning in the, for the future there, but um, a lot of my stuff books up early-ish. So uh, jump on there and grab what you want right uh, from, from my website. Um, so anyway, that's that. I, I appreciate you watching. Um, Thanks again for all your support with, you know, joining me in the field for workshops and stuff and all the positive comments and likes and stuff on the videos and Instagram. I really appreciate all that stuff. So I uh, hope you have a great day and I'll see you on the next video. And uh, that was fun today. Three bull elk. Good stuff. All right. Take care. The snowbanks are getting pretty tall out there. Have a good one. See you next time.